Hi. Hi. Let's pray as we sit. Holy Spirit, would you come and speak to each of us? Would you take my words and, uh, and shape them in the way that you would have them land in each of our ears? In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so, tell me the first word of Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 4. First word. Rejoice. Fantastic. When should we rejoice? Rejoice. Perfect. And that endeth today's sermon. <laughs> I'm speaking about consistent excellence. Firstly, a quick recap. Um, of, uh, of the last three weeks. Um, so I, I think we've got a slide that will remind me what they are, remind all of us what they are. So, um, so we talked about growing community as the first of our four values, uh, growing community of welcome and care. How do we welcome people? <laughs> say hello, fantastic. We say hello, we talk to people, um, we invite them for coffee. How, do we, uh, how long is it till you become uh, an established person in a church normally? At least a year, yes. So, so uh, we need to keep on welcoming people, even if we think we've seen them before. They may still need us to, to help them uh, to find their place in the church, which isn't just about being comfortable walking in and finding a seat, but it's finding our place in the life of the church. So uh, how do we care for people? Encourage them? Yeah, that's, that's later. How do we care for them particularly? Reach out to them, fantastic. Has anyone reached out to anyone in the last week and said, I haven't seen you, how are you doing? Fantastic. I, I was a bit worried that no one's got their hands up. Great, okay. Uh, we need to keep on doing that, keep on uh, reaching out and caring for people um, and seeing how they are. Okay, um, second one we talked about is uh, encouraging disciples. Uh, some of you were, were rushing to do this, which was really encouraging. Um, encouraging disciples in gratitude, in faith, and to take risks. Uh, how do we encourage each other? Positively. Positively. And how else do we encourage each other? It's not a trick question, honest. <laughs> words, usually. Use some words. We find ways to talk to people. Say, I really value what you did. I really appreciate that, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, taking ownership. With everyone playing our part in the body of Christ. Um, how do we take ownership? Get involved. Fantastic. Um, and some of the things we might want to get involved in are not going to be the things that we've already thought of. Um, but some of the things we've already thought of, we do need to take ownership of. What else do we take ownership in? Our faith? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a personal and a corporate dimension to taking ownership. We take ownership of our faith, which means if we're not sure, we ask. We ask a question. If we don't understand a passage in the Bible, we ask somebody. We keep on asking and seeking answers. We read books. We listen to podcasts and sermons. Uh, not just mine. There's a lot out there on the internet. Um, listen to good ones, though, please, not bad ones. Um, find the good theology. Listen to it so that we understand um, the, the questions that we have. Um, so we take ownership of our faith and of our place in the church. Fantastic. So that's the last three weeks. Fourthly, our fourth value is consistent excellence in all we do, taking care of the details for the glory of God. And I know inwardly some people will be really groaning at this one. Anyone admitting that, I think? So we're groaning because, firstly, consistency is boring. Who thinks that? Consistency can be really boring. And secondly, excellence sounds like a buzzword. As we looked at um, how to describe it, we couldn't think of anything better than consistent excellence. Um, so... As I looked to find a passage that would help illustrate the theme, I came across Philippians 4 uh, and verse 8 particularly. Finally, brothers and sisters, that's all of us, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And again, you can read that passage and think, well, none of those are particularly Christian things. Are they? I mean, anything that's lovely? Oh, that's lovely. Anything that's right? Yeah, that's right. Anything that's pure? Anything that's admirable? 
Think about such things. But the framework, the context that Paul's speaking in is the gospel. He's speaking from the place of saying that perfection is Jesus Christ. His one perfect sacrifice for our sins, we say in the Eucharistic prayer, was his death on the cross. Jesus was perfect. There was nothing wrong. He was the man who was without any sin, and yet he took on the sins of the whole world. And not just all the sins, all the things that the world and everyone in it had done up till that point 2,000 years ago that would separate humanity and God. But he took on the sins of the world that were going to come. When you leave this parking lot today and you pull out in front of a car and they honk their horn at you, that sin you're going to commit when you flip the bird. He took on that sin. He took on not only the sins we have committed, but all the sins we're going to commit. If anyone does that now, they're going to feel really guilty because I've mentioned it already, but anyway. Um, But do you get what I mean? Thank you. Because I can spend longer on this one if I need to. Paul's, Paul's speaking about anything that is good and lovely and all those things. It's because of the gospel. He's saying it's because as we fix our eyes on Jesus, as we rejoice in the Lord always, then we're going to look for all these positive things, not just because they're nice things, but because of Jesus, because of his death on the cross. And so that's the gospel that underpins everything we do here. Consistent excellence, then, as our fourth value, underpins the other three. And it's about, in a sense, if we don't do consistent excellence, then we undermine the rest. Let me explain what I mean. I've got a picture um, from the NASA website of um, some stars. Um, Fantastic. So have you seen some of these stars before in the sky? Um, If you just turn around and look at the back, all I get to see is 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 the words. <laughs> Major, <laughs> you get the pictures. Okay, so you're in the best seats. Um, fantastic. So it's it's uh, Major Constellations of Sources NASA.gov. Um, if you want to go and look this up, um, people talk about stars and say they can. And I just, I'm sorry. I look at stars in the sky and I just think there are stars in the sky. They look nice. But uh, there are people who um, are astrologers. Um, astronomers, whichever they are, and they, um, they draw lines between them and tell us that they look like something. And to me, it looks a bit like, you know when you're driving along and a child in the car says, I can see the clouds look like a cow? And, and then you kind of look and think, ah, I'd say more of a hippopotamus, actually. And that's how I am with stars. I'm not very good at joining those dots and making the big picture. The consistent excellency is about how we join the dots and make the big picture, or rather we allow other people to do it. So we'll leave the picture of stars there as I talk, and I'm going to explain this a bit more as we go on. So are we meant to be perfect? No. I love the hesitation when I ask a question. They're like, What's he, what does he want us to say here? And you could say yes and no, because elsewhere Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Um, And what he's effectively saying is the only way you can be perfect is through him. It's because of his grace and his death on the cross. So we can be perfect because Jesus paid the perfect sacrifice for our sin. He took our place on the cross. So that makes us perfect before God's eyes. and, And that's what Jesus did. So technically you could say either way. But in our everyday goings on, we're not going to be perfect at which point someone at the back stands up and shouts, I am. (laughs) If we have a culture that expects everything to go wrong, it probably will. And so we at St. George's are working on building a culture that expects things to go well. We're working on building a culture that is positive, that is striving towards excellence, And excellence, consistent excellence means every single time, not one-off. One-offs is when, um, you know, one-off is when you go and have a coffee somewhere 
and you don't expect it to be any good, and it's really good. Or if you go to someone's house, um, and you, you really didn't want to go because they're a bad cook, and they cook a good meal, and you sit there at the end and you say, that was really nice. And they then have this complex because they think, well, you didn't say that every other time. Um, do you not normally like my cooking? So the difference between a one-off thing and consistent excellence is consistent excellence means every time the same thing. Is this sounding really boring? I think it is. <laughs> consistency sounds really boring, but we humans love consistency. Who here has been to McDonald's in their life? Has anyone gone to McDonald's because it is the most amazing food in the world ever? Or did you go to McDonald's because you knew exactly what you were going to get? And you got it in the time you expected. They used to have a target that everyone would be served their food within two and a half minutes. Um, I think that's gone by the wayside now um, in my recent experience of McDonald's. But because um, yeah, now you can order by app and things in the drive through and so if you're standing there as a customer in front of them, I think it can take a bit longer. But that was their thing. It was within two and a half minutes of walking in the door, you would have food in your hand. That was their, their thing. And lots of places do it. Shout out for me your favorite restaurant chain. Keg, White Spot, Big Feast. Three people have favorite restaurants. <laughs> this is not a test. I'm just trying to get us to think about where do we see consistency? And we love it. Because we go back to white spot because we know it's going to be the same every time. And if it's not, how do we feel? Cheated. We're probably going to write an email to the customer service department, aren't we? And it's going to be along the lines of it wasn't up to your usual standard. It wasn't what I came to expect from being at White Spot, McDonald's, wherever it is. So what about for us as the church? Anglicans have always loved consistency. Anglicans have always loved consistency. Uh, when the Book of Common Prayer was first introduced, uh, it meant that in every church in England at the time, they prayed the same prayers on the same day of the year, they read the same Bible readings on, on the same day of the year. The collect, the prayer for the day, to collect our thoughts in prayer, um, they'll be the same, whichever church you went into. And, um, and in fact, what, um, what Cranmer did originally, of course, is he didn't trust the clergy to preach sermons, because what did they know? So he wrote them out. He wrote a book of sermons. And, and, if, and if he wasn't there to make sure the consistency was right, um, the, the preacher was just to read a Cranmer sermon. Uh, some of them are quite good, some of them we'd look at now and go, oh. And in the Book of Common Prayer, we have um, the 39 articles. Can anyone name them all? <laughs> Neither can I. Um, the 39 articles of religion which, which talk about how we have consistency in the church. We have creeds, we have service patterns, and so on. So that's been right back there. Now we have to work um, on more than that because we live in a new age 500 years later or something like that. And um, we're interested in how our processes and our systems and our checklists and having the right job descriptions. We spend time on the screen and making sure that the right words are on the screen. Some of you may have noticed that um, we sang the first verse of um, How Great Thou Art um, at the end of How Great Is Our God. <clears throat> and some of you might have wondered why it wasn't on the screen. Well, it wasn't on the screen because it wasn't in the plan. And this will be my third point, which, which I will get to. We have to expect the Holy Spirit and allow room for the Holy Spirit. So consistent excellence doesn't mean we, we stamp out the Holy Spirit. And so often in Anglican circles, we have stamped out the Holy Spirit. We're really good at making sure that everything is, is all in order, that we say the right prayers and do the right things and have the right colors and sing the right verses. But we can lose the ability to recognize that the Holy Spirit wants to be at work with us. And the Holy Spirit might want to do something different. 
to the plan. Doesn't mean we shouldn't have a plan, but it means we should be ready for the Holy Spirit to be at work. So we have all these things um, in terms of consistency, just to give you an example, um, did you know we have a church font? Can anyone tell me what the church font is? No, if you look at the bulletin, <laughs> that was mean, wasn't it? Uh, and the church font is Gil Sands. <coughs> Yeah, so the font is, we'll use the font for baptisms. The font on, on here is Gil Sands. And if you look at any leaflet from St. George's, and you have some in the pews, look at the contact card, the bulletin, the service paper. Uh, we use the same font. Why? It's consistency. It's so that you know that if you look at something, if you didn't see the logo, it would feel like it was St. George's. Uh, and it's the same one on everything. That's an example of consistency. Consistency is making sure that every time we hit the mark, because everything fits together. And sometimes uh, we don't see, rather like with the stars, we don't see how they're joined together in a constellation. And somebody can say to me, and I've had most of what I speak about, I've had, I could give you hundreds of examples of conversations I've had. Well, does it really matter that we use the same font? Does it really matter this? Does it really matter that? The answer is yes, because all the pieces fit together. It's being consistently excellent in everything that we do. Let's go back to your favorite restaurant. Just suppose you're in a different town. You go to Smithers for the week or something, and you find the white spot there. Is there a white spot in Smithers? I don't know. Uh, pick a town, go there. You find your favorite chain of, of restaurant or fast food or coffee shop, and um, you've been driving for a long way, and you need to go and pay a visit. So you go to the washroom, toilet, restroom, whatever you want to call it, and you go in, and it looks disgusting. It, like, I mean, it, like horrible like they really don't care about keeping their toilet clean. You struggle to lock the door on the back of the handle. There's no toilet paper. The soap dispenser is covered in mold. Okay. What are you thinking? Your first thought, your first thought is probably ooh, or words to that effect. Your second thought is gonna be, I don't really think I wanna eat lunch here anymore. Isn't it? Isn't it? What's that got to do with it? How is the cleanliness of the toilets related to the quality of the food you're eating? It's connected because in your mind, subconsciously, you have joined the dots. And that is why having a consistency across the whole church is vitally important. Because if we, for example, had um, a bulletin that had 10 different fonts, and we've all been to these churches. Some, some churches love to just see how many fonts they can get on the same piece of paper. And anyone who's ever done graphic design goes, ah. Um, and other people just think, oh, that looks a bit messy. Obviously, they're playing fonts. Um, it begins to give us an idea that we're not caring about what we're doing. Coffee's another great example. Um, Coffee's always a great example, isn't it? Uh, well, I like coffee, so. Um, and uh, so I, I was at a church where um, they'd often run out of coffee because they didn't make enough. They didn't want to waste the coffee, you know? It's really important to save money, if you can, if you're a church, was the, was the philosophy. That was the philosophy there. We need to save money. And so they would make a reasonable amount of coffee, and they would say, it's fine. If the coffee runs out, we can just make an instant. I moved to Canada purely because um, you have good coffee. <laughs> and I was done with that experience of, of, um, of having greeted every... No, it's, it's, there, are, there are other reasons. God brought me here, I think. Um, but what's it like if you like coffee? And you can do this with any drink, but I'll speak of coffee. You, you go up, you're expecting a nice cup of coffee. We haven't got any, any real coffee, so we're going to give you some fake stuff. Now, some people like that. Use a different illustration, whatever works for you. But if we're going to offer coffee, 
We need to make sure we're consistently excellent with it. And so that's what we do. It's better to throw away nine cups of coffee at a cost of about 60 cents than have one person who comes along and says, can I have a coffee? No, we've run out. Why does that matter? What if it's your first visit to the church or your 10th visit to the church and you've, you fancy a coffee after the service and you go out to get one and there's none there? Does that say that we value welcome? No. It says we don't. It says we're actually really stingy. And so consistent excellence has to be what we're doing in everything. Alpha is a great example of something uh, that is consistent. We use the same formula, the same format every time. We vary it slightly, but it more or less is the same, and it's a fantastic thing. Uh, if you haven't come to Alpha yet, come tonight. Um, actually, after the service, I think we're going to show um, the last week's video. So get your coffee. Um, there'll be loads, trust me. Um, uh, get your coffee, come in, and, and the video is 20 minutes. Watch that to catch up, and then come tonight. Uh, food from 6, and the thing starts at half past 6, 6.30. If consistency sounds boring, excellence sounds even worse, I think. It sounds like a business term, doesn't it? Or, or even worse than a business term, it sounds like the objectives of a government department. Has anyone been in a workplace where they put excellence on the wall and it just winds you up? In a sense, excellence is doing things really well. Anglicans have always had high standards. It's why we have altar guilds. It's why if, um, if you go into the sacristy, which is the room where the altar guild have all their stuff, um, there's a proper name for it, but we'll call it stuff. All the stuff's in there, and um, they have a book that tells them exactly how to set things up. And it's why week by week the table is set up in this way. And I did think about being really mean uh, and, uh, and coming in and changing all the colors so they didn't match. But I thought that would disrespect the people who spent time doing it yesterday. But if you look, everything matches. If you notice, we've got green here, and green here, and green, and green, and green, because we're in the season of ordinary time. That is about consistent excellence. I was in a church where they had 16 candles, one six, 16 candles on the table, really high Anglican church, and they had a plan of exactly the order at which they would light them and extinguish them. Because that was, um, that was what they thought was important. The thing is, often in church life, there's, there's two tiers of things, aren't there? There's the sacred and the ordinary. And so churches can spend so much time and effort getting the sacred right that they forget the ordinary. It's why many churches have matching colors and linens at the front, but have coffee cups that don't match. It's why thousands of dollars will be spent on furnishing sanctuaries, because that's the place where we worship God. And yet the furniture in the fellowship spaces will be um, hand-me-downs from congregation members who have decided to upgrade their furniture at home. And so what they do is they ring the rector or if they know the rector's going to say no, which would happen in this case, they might ring the warden and try it on them. I've, we're getting some new furniture at home, and God's really leading me to give these to the church. Would you like them? And they might tentatively say, well, tell me about them. Well, actually, there were supposed to be eight chairs in the set, but there's only seven. And, and two of them have broken legs. But it's fine, because if you just put some books underneath, and we know you're having a book sale today, so you can... But that is how churches have been for years. And that needs to change. We need to have the same effort, the same consistent excellence in the sanctuary space, in the pews, as we do out there. So that's why we spent the money getting tables. If I had a dollar for every person who said, well, we have perfectly good tables. We have perfectly good chairs. We have perfectly good mugs. But what does it look like to say we're going to value our time with each other as much as we value our time together with God? Because is God with us when we're out there having our coffee? Is God with us when we're out there having our coffee? Yes, fantastic. Excellence is about serving great coffee, having bulletins that look neat having a screen that tells us what's going to happen that's correct, that we can read. Excellence is about making sure that the colors match, that we can hear every instrument in the music and we have the right mix. 
because the dots are joined. Great coffee means more people feel welcome, more people want to stare around and have a chat and a conversation, which we call fellowship. People stare around to have a chat, they build relationships. When they build relationships, they might want to come back. This is how we live out our value of growing community of welcome and care. And so we invest money in, in training, money and time in training our teams. The prayer ministry team who are on the side week by week and pray for people. We've had two Monday evenings where they gave up a couple of hours each time and we've talked about how we pray for people, how we do it consistently and make sure that whoever you go to pray with, they're on the same page. It's about consistent excellence. It's why we spend money on full color glossy postcards to advertise our Christmas services and not just something we can run off on the printer in black and white. Because when someone looks at it, they might not want to come to church, but at least they'll see this is a church that cares enough about me that they're going to spend the money to make this in full color. I could give a lot of different examples. Last example is this one, and then I'm, I'm going to move on. Um, it's how we spend time investing in our building and looking to make things better. Uh, can you put your hand up if you fell over um, on your way into church this morning in the parking lot? No, because we have a contractor, um, and this costs us about $1,500 every month, who puts salt out there. And you might think that's a lot of money, and it is. But it's really important that when people come to church, consistently they know the parking lot is going to be safe to walk on. And we haven't always done that. And that's put a lot of stress on a few individuals going, should we, should we get the snow plow out? Should we get some salt out? We've got a contract. So you know now, consistently, every day, it's not just every Sunday, every day you come into this parking lot, it will be clear and safe. It's safe for the daycare, it's safe for baby cafe, it's safe for the Thursday service, it's safe if you come in to drop something off. Consistently. That is consistent excellence. Is it costing us a lot of money? Yes. But it's because we value being able to say we're a church that's available to get into every day of the week and the snow isn't going to stop us and the ice isn't going to stop us. That is consistent excellence. So excellence will mean we're going to spend more money on things and not less. Some things. Why? Because it matters. It's part of the culture we want to build. Consistent excellence means doing the same things again and again reliably. It's being faithful in the way we are as a church. I want to talk um, about the Holy Spirit. In fact, I want to tell you a story. Because sometimes we can think that um, all we have to do is pray. There's a whole school of thought in churches. All we have to do is pray. And, and we pray and God will do the stuff. Um, and actually, I think what we need to do is exactly what we're doing. It's the consistent excellence piece. That time and again, we need to have services that people can come to. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 6.30. Services every week that you can come to and worship. Um, that's the consistency. We need to do the day-to-day. -day. And then we can expect to be surprised by the Holy Spirit. So we don't rely on the Holy Spirit to do the work for us. We've got to do the work. We've got to have the systems in place to run the church. And then we can expect at times that the Holy Spirit will short-circuit something. They say it takes someone who walks in off the street and knows nothing of, of the Christian faith eight years to go from that place to saying, yes, I want to be baptized. Eight years. And quite often that's the case. And then sometimes we see the Holy Spirit do something. If we want a church full of people that can impact the community, it takes us to get the details right. We have to do what we can. And over time, we see results, and we're seeing them. We see people visit the church. We see people join the church. People get baptized and confirmed and all that stuff. We do everything we can do by the grace of God and with the Spirit working in us. And then sometimes as we're doing those things, 
God will just surprise us. <coughs> Friday was my day off. Um, well, in theory, Friday and Saturday was my day off, but I didn't take either, um, as seems to be the way lately. But uh, So I went to visit um, Tammy's mum. Many of you know Tammy. And we're praying for her mum. Uh, she has cancer. Um, it's not looking good. Um, and so Tammy is, and her mum said I could, um, and the other person involved said I can share this story now. Um, and, and so that's what I want to do. So I went to visit them in, uh, in Burnaby, um, and, uh, which, is, which is quite a trek. It's slightly outside our parish. Um, but I went to visit because anytime someone asks me to visit within reason, um, as in I'm, I'm not going to Kelowna, <laughs> but, uh, but within reason, I go and visit. Just day-to-day, -day, ordinary parish ministry. Yes, I do all the fun stuff. And sometimes I do the really ordinary stuff of just going and doing a visit. So I was going to do a visit, and in the visit, um, I knew there'd be questions around what happens when we die. Um, someone's got on my own from Les Miserables, I believe, on their phone. Fantastic. Um, so I went, and, uh, and you'll know, many of you, um, if somebody's ill, it says, go fetch the elders, get them to come to bring oil to anoint and pray for healing. Uh, so when it says the elders, it doesn't mean the old people in the church. It means those who are in leadership. So um, being, being the elder of the church, uh, off I went with my oil um, to go and pray and to anoint and to, and to pray for healing. So Yvonne was lying in the bed um, in, in the living room. And there was a care aide there, um, and I'm, I'm not going to use her name. And the care aide was there, and Tammy was there. Uh, and so I, I prayed. Um, prayed just as you'll, you'll get when you come up here. Um, is it okay if I put my hand on your head? Yes. Um, come Holy Spirit. So I prayed, come Holy Spirit. I prayed for her. I prayed for peace. I prayed for healing, because that's what she asked for. Um, and I anointed her with oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Just doing the ordinary stuff, it's consistent. Time and again, it's what we do. And at the end of the prayer, I did exactly what you'd get if you came up to be prayed for here. And the person would probably say to you, are you okay? Or, or, or I think the words I used were, did you, did you feel anything? Is anything happening? And, and, and Yvonne said, yeah, I feel a peace. Good. Ordinary kind of what happens. Um, the Holy Spirit comes and someone feels at peace. And then sitting on the sofa over here, the care aide says, um, when you prayed that prayer, I suddenly felt cold. So um, Yvonne said, well, give her a blanket, you know. No, 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 it's not that kind of cold. I felt a cold all through my body like I've never felt before. She said, so I said, would you like us to pray for you? So Tammy and I went to pray for her. Um, and Tammy hasn't, I don't think, done the prayer training, but she knew exactly what to say. And she said, is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? She puts her hand on her shoulder. And I, and I was just there. And, and, and I, uh, I, I don't think it needs two people to put their hands on their shoulders. Um, it works with one. Uh, anyway, so... Um, so I was just there, ready to pray. And she said, can you, can you do what you did and put your, your hand on my head? So I put my hand on her head. And I prayed, come Holy Spirit. And as I prayed, she started crying, started saying things in another language, because she's from another country, um, that I didn't understand. And quite, I'm not going to tell you the full story, we're being recorded, but there was quite a lot of crying, quite a lot of things were happening. And so I just prayed for more of you, Lord, for more of your spirit. And I asked for peace. And this peace fell upon her and she stopped crying. And so then we had a conversation about, well, what's your story? And the story is that she's from another country, she's from another religion. And yet felt that she needed to know Jesus. 
and that's an amazing story in itself. But meanwhile, lying in the bed was Yvonne, who needed to know that all the stuff I said, which is just the ordinary stuff I'd say to any of you if you ask me to come and visit, and, and you're, on, you're in that place, I'll open up John 14, I'll read 1 to 6, I'll assure you that if you're a Christian, if you've been baptized, if you believe Jesus is Lord, that John 14, 1 to 6, it talks about, in my Father's house are many rooms. It's not rocket science, I've done it lots. Many priests have done it lots. But because of what happened with this person, who hadn't come to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, who hadn't come to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but was just sitting on one side, and Yvonne sees this happening, and it made everything everything that I'd said come true for her. She believed it in this amazing way because she'd seen something that she'd never seen before. And in those situations, you know, people ask me, is this normal? And and it's always one of those things because I want to say, well, yes, in that God does this stuff. It's, It's normal for God to surprise me. But actually, no, I'd never seen that before. I'd never seen someone of of another faith be touched by the Holy Spirit in quite that way, quite that profoundly. I'm going to stop there for for the time, and you can ask me questions later. But I think what I want to say is that today I come back to church to lead two communion services and to lead an alpha come back to do the ordinary stuff. And tomorrow I'll be in the office and we're doing some stuff with the annual report and the vestry list and those things, the ordinary stuff. And so for all of us, we have to keep on consistently. Knowing that God will occasionally just break in and give us a glimpse of his glory. Knowing that God will touch us with the truth that a peace that passes all understanding, because it really does. Knowing that on one level, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I've never run a church before. I've never experienced that. But God calls all of us to step out in faith. And much of that stepping out in faith starts with the day by day consistency of reading our Bible, of praying that God will use us, of praying for other people and of responding faithfully to what God calls us to do. When we do that consistent excellence piece, ordinary and boring as it might sound, God occasionally will step in, short circuit the whole thing, and we're left just going, wow. So let's be consistent in all that we do as a church. Let's strive for excellence because the only perfection is Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. And then let's have our eyes open and ready to be surprised. Because the Holy Spirit, I believe, wants to break in. He wants to break in to all of our lives. And he wants to break into the lives of even people from another country who speak another language, who have another faith. Amen.